Hi, today I'll share six smart time saving tips in PowerPoint which you can use in your next presentation. These are tips for beginners and can be used in any recent versions of PowerPoint. By the way, I'm Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. We help professionals like you create engaging presentations. Let us jump right in. And the first tip is to use quick access toolbar. I've seen so many presenters waste their precious time trying to search for tools under various tabs in PowerPoint. Not only that, you get even more frustration when you see that the tool is hidden under a drop down menu or even a flyout menu. Fortunately, PowerPoint allows you to save some time by placing all your frequently used tools in one place called Quick Access Toolbar. Let me show you how much time you can save with this simple option. Let us say I have a slide like this and here I have various elements and I want to perform a certain set of operations. I want to have all these pictures aligned to the top and distributed horizontally so they look nice. Now, I need to first select all these pictures, then go to arrange, then go to align and once it opens up, I need to search for align top and here I see the option and I say align top. Now to distribute these pictures horizontally, I need to go once again to arrange, align and look for distribute horizontally and click. Now let us say I want to arrange these two elements properly, then I need to select both the elements and once again go to arrange, align and say align center. Now imagine the amount of frustration a beginner will have going back and forth to the same set of tools over and over again. Now let me show you a much smarter way to do the same set of operations when you have all the tools in one handy location. Let me press Ctrl Z so I can get it back to the way it was. Now let me select these elements. Now I don't have to go to multiple submenus. I just go here and say align top. Now to distribute horizontally, I just need to go here and click. Job done. Now to have this and this aligned properly, I just go here and look for align center and job done. It is so easy for me to save a lot of time when I have a properly constructed quick access toolbar. Now how do you add a quick access toolbar? I'll show you. You can add pretty much any tool that you see under any tab to quick access toolbar with just a couple of clicks. For example, if I want to add arrange tool onto this quick access toolbar, I just need to right click on the tool and go to this option called add to quick access toolbar and I instantly have the tool available with me. Now, if I don't want this, then I can right click on the tool and say remove from quick access toolbar. It is that easy for you to pick and choose any tool that you want and place it here so you can save time. Now, what I showed you just now is a small glimpse of what you can do with quick access toolbar. I've created two full tutorials that show you how to set up quick access toolbar and what are some of the tips that you have to use quick access toolbar optimally. I will leave a link to these two tutorials in the description box below the video. You can click on the link and watch those videos right after this video. The second tip is to use mini toolbar. Now, what is a mini toolbar? When I select something and when I leave the mouse button, I instantly get this toolbar and this is called as mini toolbar. This saves you a lot of time when you develop a habit of using this. For example, if I want to have this word bolded, I can go here and click on the option. And if I want it in red color, I can click on this. If I want this to be highlighted, I can click on this. If I want to change the menu, I can go here and change it. Now, anything and everything that you need to work with the text is available in this mini toolbar and you don't have to go every time to access the various tools available in your ribbon. This is a big time saver. Now, the best part is the tools inside a mini toolbar are customized according to the task in hand. Let's say I want to go to shapes and draw a rectangle. I right click and I see the mini toolbar right here. If I want to change the fill color, I just can go here and change it to red color. I can go to outline and change it to some other color, say blue. And if I want to add some shape effects, I can go here, go to preset and have something like this. And if I want to rotate it, I can do so, say rotate left 90 degrees. If I want to send it to back, see anything I want to do with the shape are all available right in front of me. So I don't really have to go looking for the specific tool under the various tabs. The thing is, once you develop the habit of using a mini toolbar, you will save tons of time in the future because all the context relevant tools and buttons are served up in a platter to you, so to speak. The third tip 
is to use smart art to crop multiple photos. This is a slightly unconventional tip to help you save some time. Now let us say I want to crop all these four images into a circular shape. Now what are my options? I need to select each picture, go to picture format, go to crop, go to crop to shape and then say oval and then once again go to crop aspect ratio and say 1 is to 1 and then hit escape or click outside. Now one photo is cropped circularly. Now if I need to do multiple ones, I cannot do that by selecting all the pictures and then by going to picture format and go to crop. Here you can see I don't have options like aspect ratio available for me. So it can take up a lot of your time unnecessarily. Now let me show you how to do the same thing in a much smarter way. Let me press Ctrl Z so I can bring it back to the way it was. Here I select all the photos in one go. Go to picture format, go to picture layout and I see which layout gives me circular crop. There are quite a few like this one has circular crop available. I have this one available as circular crop. So I can choose this and I just need to ungroup it twice. So I can have this instead of as a smart art, I have this available as a group of shapes. So now I have ungrouped them all. I now can select only these elements and press Ctrl X to cut them. I don't need any of these other elements. So I delete them and bring them back. Now, if I want them all to be of a particular size, I can go to picture format after having them all selected. I can go to this and I can change this as five and I will have all the pictures cropped to the exact size and dimension that I want. Isn't this a much smarter and faster way to crop multiple images in bulk that too in the shape that you desire? That is the power of knowing how to use the various tools in PowerPoint the right way. The next tip is to learn and use control shortcuts. Now what are control shortcuts? Any shortcut where you use a control button along with some other key is a control shortcut. These are my favorite set of shortcuts. For example, let us select this word and if I want it bolded, I can use control B. If I want it to be underlined, I can use control U. And if I want it italicized, I can use control I. Can you see I can do so many things with just control and some other character. These control shortcuts are big time savers. I totally hate those long shortcuts that involve an alt button and an N key, D key, S key, F key, U key. <laughs> Too much. Usually by the time I remember and type all those keystrokes in sequence, I forget the actual task that I am on. In my humble opinion, any good shortcut should involve just two keystrokes, three at the most. Anything in excess is too much. In case you need help in learning shortcuts in PowerPoint, we have created an entire playlist for you. There are quite a few very interesting ways you can use shortcuts to save a lot of time while working with PowerPoint. I will leave a link to this playlist right here in the description box below the video. You can click on the link and watch those videos as well after this video. The fifth tip is to use Format Painter and Animation Painter. These are a set of brilliant features available in PowerPoint and can save you a lot of time. First, let me show you the power of a Format Painter. Let us go to shapes and let us draw a square. Now I don't see this shape to be interesting enough. I happen to see in one of the templates from <coughs> comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint templates bundle that there is this kind of a treatment given to a shape. Now this looks quite interesting and I want the same treatment given to the square that I just drew. All I need to do is to go to that specific shape then go to home and click on this format painter now go back to the slide and click here and instantly the same effect is applied to my square as well. Now this looks far more interesting, isn't it? Now not only this, if I see that there is some other kind of a 3D format that is done to a particular shape, I can have that copied as well. For example, I like this treatment given to this shape. I go here, click on format painter. I go back and I click on this. Now I have the same formatting applied to my square. Now, if you were to work on converting your square into this particular shape by yourself, then you need to go through multiple steps. Format Painter allows you to bypass all those unnecessary steps and can help you create some brilliant effects at the click of a button, provided you have some nice styles and formats to pick from. Now, there is another brilliant option called Animation Painter and let me show you how powerful that is. 
Let us say I have this and I apply a certain set of animations. For example, I want to have this float in and I want to add one more animation and just for the argument's sake, I want to have the object color changed to this and I want to add one more animation. Let us say I want to have this exit by way of flyout. Now, when I go to animation pane, you can see that there are these three animations applied to this. Now, let us say I want to have another shape drawn. So let me go here and draw another rectangle like this. Now, let us say I want this shape too to have the same set of animations in the same sequence. All I need to do is to first select this shape where we have all the animations already done. Go to animations tab. Go to animation painter available in the advanced animation group. And now I can click on this rectangle and you can see that it comes in, changes color and flies out. The same set of animations are applied to this one as well. Now just imagine the amount of time you would save when you need to create animated slides and motion graphics. Now the last and final tip is to save and reuse your work. Have you designed a nice looking slide? Then save it in a library which you can access readily. Have you created a beautiful diagram which you can use later? Then save it in the same library. Have you designed a wonderful animation spending hours? Then save that animation in the same library. Now let us say you find this slide where we have a nice animation like this and this happens to be a timeline animation. I show this and then you show the next one and the next one and the next one or some other timeline that you happen to find which is also quite interesting like this and you want to use this in your next slide presentation. All you need to do is to save this as a templates library in one of your folders and the next time you design a slide you can get your inspiration by browsing through the various things that you have saved already. When we had our own design agency, this is one habit we developed that saved us a lot of hard work and got a lot of appreciation for us from our clients. In fact, this library of assets that we created has been the inspiration to create our comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle, which is today our flagship product. In case you don't know what it is, it is a collection of more than 4,500 plus PowerPoint templates that are already animated. So you just need to pick a relevant slide from the templates bundle and insert it onto your presentation and your presentation gets ready in no time. If you want to use Format Painter to pick the style from one of the shapes we created inside our templates from Comprehensive Bundle, you can do so. If you want to pick a certain animation using Animation Painter, you can do so. If you want to use an entire slide and stick it in your presentation, you can do so. Or if you want to pick up individual elements from multiple slides, you can do so. In fact, when you're stuck for ideas and you want some creative inspiration to visualize your ideas in your next presentation, you can use the templates from our comprehensive all-in-one bundle. This product has a lot of uses. It is a game changer. I will leave a link to this comprehensive bundle in the description box below the video. You can click on the link and check out more details about this. By the way, are you interested to receive 25 creative PowerPoint ideas that you can use in your next presentation? Then you can sign up for our free email course called 25 Creative PowerPoint Ideas. The link is in the description box below the video. You just need to click on the link or the link that you see right now on your screen to sign up for the email mini course. So go ahead, click, sign up and take your presentations to the next level. I'll see you inside the mini training.